Today I want to talk about the Confederacy. We're shifting to the South. Um, the Confederacy remains controversial. The history of the Confederacy, like everything else related to the Civil War, it remains relevant to the moment. It's sort of died down now, but certainly in the 1990s and into the early 20th century, there were numerous controversies in the South about the public display of the Confederate flag. In South Carolina, after a giant debate, they took the Confederate flag down from the from being way on top of the Capitol, the legislature building in Columbia, South Carolina, and they stuck it just on a flagpole on the, on the grounds. Um, as I think I've mentioned, Ole Miss, you know, the University of Mississippi has taken down a lot of these Confederate flags and changed their mascot from Colonel Reb, you know, to Black Bear or something, Brown Bear. Um, but uh, the, the controversy is still around about how should we think about the Confederacy. So just here's a couple of examples. Number one, this was a few years ago. A, as I've said before, I'm interested in postage stamps. John Brown hasn't gotten there yet, but Jefferson Davis is on a postage stamp, okay? But this led to controversy, or in the words of this headline, it leaves a bad taste. In, but in, among Southerners, a friend of mine, Peter Ripley of Florida State, didn't like this stamp. He says, these people were lucky not to be executed. Why should they have a stamp? <laughs> Davis was nothing but a second-rate senator who led a vile insurrection. So that's Ripley's point of view. However, the Postal Service says, I don't actually see him as a traitor. Actually, he set up his own government. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't got that. By the way, you may have noticed the Postal Service is millions, billions of dollars in debt, and their command of logic may have something to do with that. Um, Davis remained the last Confederate. This is interesting. Unlike Robert E. Lee, who urged reconciliation after the war, Davis remained the last Confederate. He refused to seek the restoration of his citizenship, although Congress granted it posthumously in 1979. It took a while. All right, so there is a stamp, or was, of Davis. Uh, what else? Well, then here we have from Harvard, Confederate memorial proposed at Harvard. Now, I don't even know if we have, do we have a memorial to Columbia students who fought in the Civil War? I know we have in Low Library those who fought in World War I, World War II. Actually, if you read um, uh, Robert McCahey's History of Columbia, which was published in 2004 for our 250th anniversary, you will discover that our students were either really clever or cowards because a smaller percentage of Columbia students at that time volunteered to serve on either side in the Civil War than any other comparable institution. So they're clever at Columbia. Or maybe they just wanted to make some money while everyone else was out fighting. So I don't know if there's a, but Harvard has a big memorial to those students who fought for the Union, but apparently 68 alumni fought for the Confederacy, and there's been a movement to get a memorial to them, but it hasn't happened. Harvard has refused to memorialize those who fought. So that's the sort of controversy here in the Harvard Alumni Magazine. And finally, just to show you, you never know where the Confederacy is going to pop up, um, this is a job discrimination case that uh, was in Washington, D.C., I guess. And, um, you know, in, legally speaking, in the United States, you do not have a legal right to have a job, but you have a legal right not to be dismissed from a job for certain reasons. You can be dismissed. I mean, there have been all sorts of weird cases. There was a, a woman who was dismissed by her employer, a dentist, because she was too attractive. He literally said, you're fired because my wife is jealous of you, you're too attractive. And she went to court and they said, no, no, you can fire someone for that. You don't have a constitutional right to be attractive or not attractive. But you, <laughs> you cannot be fired because of your race. You cannot be fired purely because of your gender. You can't be fired because of a disability. In other words, there are a whole ethnic or religious national origin. You, you, in other words, a whole series of categories that it is illegitimate legally to fire somebody. If you just don't like them, you can fire them. But anyway, a guy sued uh, because he claimed he was fired for his, I guess this is Richmond actually, his national origin. What was his national origin? Confederate Southern American. He lost. The federal courts have ruled that Confederate Southern American is not a protected national origin. <laughs> 
So if you just don't like a guy flying the Confederate flag, you can fire him without fear of legal consequences. All right. All right, now, meanwhile, let's just turn back to scholarship. Most uh, writing on the Confederacy, well, of course, there's innumerable battle histories and this kind of thing, but most histories of the Confederacy are either implicitly or explicitly shaped by um, a question, why did they lose, to explain Confederate defeat. Now, I must hasten to add that the book on our list this week by Stephanie McCurry is not in that category. She explicitly says, I'm not trying to explain Confederate defeat. I'm trying to, although she has implications for it, I'm trying to explain what happened, at least some aspect, in the Confederacy. But anyway, there are many devotees of the lost cause who say, you know, the Confederacy was just overwhelmed by, they fought gallantly, they fought heroically, but they were overwhelmed by, you know, greater manpower, greater technology, and economic resources. So they fought the good fight, but there was absolutely no way they could have won in that circumstances. Now, however, remember we have said the stronger side doesn't always win a war. So many historians have looked for other reasons uh, internal to the Confederacy. In other words, just to oversimplify, are the reasons external, just the North strength, or internal, some flaw within the Confederacy that led to its defeat. And there are a million candidates. There is poor political leadership. There is excessive individualism. States' rights in the Confederacy made it impossible, I'm just giving you various theories, to mobilize uh, effectively. Desertion from the army by non-slaveholding or poorer soldiers. Women, we'll talk about this in a minute, uh, giving up on the war. White women, enthusiasm for the war waning. Uh, as I say, some blame Jefferson Davis. I quoted David Potter, a great historian, a few weeks ago. If the North and South had exchanged presidents, the South would have won. In other words, it comes down to Lincoln's skill and Davis's lack of skill, according to Potter. Um, or their financial policies were there. Achilles' heel. They never quite figured out how to pay for and mobilize resources for the war. Or, uh, as I said, uh, David Donald di said, died of democracy, because that's a kind of ironic uh, uh, title for an essay. Died of democracy. The South was more democratic than the North in that Southern, white Southerners refused to accept discipline, refused to accept orders, and therefore they couldn't get mobilized into an effective uh, uh, fighting force. Um, so, for example, in the midst of the carnage at the Battle of Shiloh, a unit, a battalion, a Confederate battalion from New Orleans was wearing blue. The, the, the blue and gray didn't come 100% into use until later in 1862. And at the beginning of the war, people were wearing all sorts of colors. And um, so Confederates in blue here and other Confederates began firing on them. And they fired back. And when the commander, when an officer informed their commander that they were shooting at their own side, the, uh, the colonel said, I know it, sir, but damn it, we fire on anyone who fires on us. <laughs> so that's an example of what Donald maybe is talking about. Then there's James McPherson uh, in Battle Cry of Freedom, who has what might seem like a simple explanation. The South lost because it lost the battles. In other words, they lost on the battlefield. If they could have won battles, no question. Battles can turn, and then they would have won the war. So you don't need all those other explanations. But the problem with that is, why do battles lose a war? I mean, the, would the North have lost if it had lost more battles? It's, it's not 100% clear. Um, Anyway, there are, all of these explanations raise other questions. That's the problem with most historical explanations. If they're interesting, then you just get more questions. If internal division of one kind or another, class division, gender division, political division in the Confederacy was the reason for their failure, there was plenty of internal division in the North also. How did the North somehow manage to overcome internal division, and if that is the argument, the South was not able to do so. Some people argue that the problem was how they conceptualized the war to begin with, that they were fighting it as a war of, that they already were a nation. They were fighting it as two established nations rather than a kind of revolutionary war, a war of national liberation, as they would call it, in the 20th century, which um, a war like that um, creates a mindset in which sacrifices are more 
likely to be accepted in which people have a much longer time frame of how long the war will uh, go on. Um, what about um, their, you know, is it their democratic ethos or lack of democratic ethos? Some people say the planters who controlled, a, you know, a small minority, large planters of the southern pop white population, the planters who uh, nonetheless controlled um, uh, southern politics and the vast majority of the members of the cabinet and members of the Confederate Congress and governors were significant slave owners, um, that they, weren't made, they were not able, willing to make the sacrifices that were required to, to win the war. They, they, they were so intent on preserving slavery that they uh, warped the Southern war effort. We'll talk about that uh, possibility in a minute. So all they, these are all that one could probably find other explanations as well. Now, so let's just look at what happened and see what we can figure out.